Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. I am super excited today because I am going to show you my April garden tour and it is going to be epic. So make sure you like that button and share my video and make sure you subscribe because you are going to see some gorgeous, gorgeous blooms today. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So I'm really excited because I have been able to keep the deer out of my garden with my invisible garden fence. Like I really should sell these little kits, you guys, because it has really, really worked. So I have more blooms this year than I ever have because as always, the deer have come up and eat have eaten my new foliage off the roses. And if they eat the new foliage, they're gonna eat the blooms. So I've got some gorgeous, gorgeous display of roses for you today. I'm super excited and everything's just looking like lush and green and beautiful so i'm really excited to share it with you so i'm going to turn the camera around and i'm going to show you some gorgeous blooms today i hope you're not disappointed i hope you're inspired and yes this was my birthday weekend so i hope you enjoyed all the little birthday celebrations that i had my mama gave me this gorgeous garden quilt so make sure you go watch that video you will love that so i got to garden a little bit with my mama and she's about seven and a half to eight hours away and i normally don't get to do that that much so i hope you enjoy that video let me turn the camera around and let's get started do you see that bench on the water fountain there what a good way to start my video right i've got lots of finches lots of bluebirds lots of mockingbirds the mockingbirds are a little bullishy though let's just start over here so I have a fountain and everybody needs a fountain in their garden and this these roses right here are called Thomas Graham and they're supposed to be yellow but I feel like they're a little bit more peachy color because you see the new foliage that comes out right here is a little bit more peachy so peachy to kind of a yellowish color and then it ages out until white I should say. I have three David Austin roses right here in this little area. Look at this, how pretty this is, just peeking up over this water fountain right there. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? It's a beautiful display. So this one looks a little bit more yellow and peachy. Beautiful, beautiful. So Thomas Graham, these are three kind of medium shrubs, I would say. This gets a little bit more, I'm gonna say a little bit more shade than normal. I have a couple grasses here that I still need to get planted into the ground. I'm still planting, you guys. I've just got lots and lots of stuff. And oh, can you not deny this beauty? Look at this. This is my yellow Baptisia from Proven Winners. I have two. One's just starting to come out. This one's a little bit earlier than the other one, but this yellow is so, so pretty. Now, my little bit of advice to you is they do not like to be replanted. I replanted this one and it really struggled the first year, but their tap roots just really, really go all the way down to the bottom. So if you want to plant a Baptisia, make sure you find the perfect spot for it because I love this one and I wanted to bring it closer up into the garden so I could see it a little bit better. And then it struggled the first year. This container right here, I just got some feet for it. Look at the little feet, you guys. So I do have drip here, so I need to like not have this like right onto the ground. And these feet were just perfect. I got these at Wilson's Nursery and they're the same type of um, as this pot right here with the pottery. Just gorgeous and you can see my drip tubing that goes from my half inch over here up through the drain hole and then you can see where I have my drip to the pot up here. These right here are like African daisies so they're doing really good. I think they peter out in our hot summer and then they'll come back and look really good in the fall and that is a perennial and this is candy tuft and it's a perennial too. You guys, this one's just been blooming its little head off for, I know, over a month that I did this container. And then up here is the uh, 
as I always have, geranium in my head. It is not a geranium. Ah, I'll come back to it. Shoot, I'm sure you all are commenting like what it is. It's the flower that flowers that smells so good. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> Look at Sasha. It's her nap time. Egg on it. She's so sleepy. So precious. All right, and then all of this right here is my little gathering of plants that I still need to get into the ground. Some of these are that I bought. Some of them are from seed. So this was like a leftover. This peachy keen verbenum was leftover. So I think I'm going to put that in the ground. This, I believe, was some type of lavender that I grew. I think that's a lavender too. Smell it. Yeah, it smells like lavender. And then I've got snapdragons here. A whole flat of that. And they need to be watered again. That's why I need to get them into the ground. Because these little containers, they dry out so fast. A couple of hostas that I need to get into the ground. Look how pretty this foliage is on this plant right here. This little bit of lighter color on the leaf. Let's see what that one is. I bought this one at King's. No, I did not buy this at King's. I'm sorry. This one I bought bare root. And then it, it didn't do anything last year. And this year it came up on me. I don't know what's eating on that. Something is. So yeah, that one came up from last year that was bare root. And I'm not sure. If, I'll have to look back at the name. And then I got a couple of hostas right here. They're from Monrovia. This one's called Libby Hosta. I like the foliage on that one too. And they look really good right here paired with this one as well. And this one is the Dazzled Hosta right there. So I need to get all that in the ground. I'm working on it, you guys. I'm trying my best to get everything planted. And then I found this beauty the other day little lucky pot of gold none of my lantana came back this year you guys i don't know about i know my friend dawn's hers did that was up close to her house so there's no blooms on this yet but my butterflies love this you all if you want to attract butterflies plant you some lantana either in a container or in the ground does good either place and then these are all grown from my seed I think these are my foxgloves. I planted a whole big area of foxgloves yesterday, but I still got quite a bit more left. And let's see what else we got here. I didn't have a lot of luck with my fever few. I got one little plant there, you guys. Like, look. So I started some inside, but look, they're starting to come, come out more now. And I believe fever few, I, I want them for, for my cut flowers. I believe they come back year after year. And then I've got some basil here that I need to get into the ground. And I don't know what this one is. These are still tiny. Oh, my straw flower. Still tiny. Some more foxglove, I believe. There's something else in there. It's not a foxglove. I think that one looks like a salvia. What do you guys think? And then more foxglove over here. And I think that's basil as well. I believe there's a tag in it. Let me see. Oh, oregano Greek. This is supposed to be really pretty for my foliage too just as for like not not as a focal flower but just as really really pretty foliage i'm not really sure if it blooms we'll have to i'll let you know and we're just we're gonna learn together because i really don't remember this box gloves look so pretty i think there's something else growing in this one too that's a little bit different i think 
And then a little peek of my west side garden over here. We'll get over there in just a second. So I'm gonna turn around just so slightly and then I have like a little Yoshio cherry, not a tree, but like a little shrub. It's got real pretty delicate leaves on it. Very, very pretty. And it's doing pretty good in the shade. And then my tea olives are doing good right here. They're starting to provide some privacy for me. I've got four of them and they're, I'm trying to get some privacy right here from the neighbors since we're so close together. And then the summer and snow jasmine is looking really pretty with this gold dust. I think that combination is gonna be really pretty together. I got brand new cocoa liners and I do love these hanging baskets. They're very nice quality. So those are doing good. And then down here below, I have some, the pink gara is blooming and then so is my phlox down here blooming too. Oh, can you guess what this is, you guys? This is an amaryllis. If you don't know what to do with your blooms, you can replant them in the garden and they will bloom for you in the summertime. So this is not fr not from this year, but from last year. Look how gorgeous that is. So try to get some colors that are not just all red that you'll enjoy into your garden and then you can replant that and repurpose it. So pretty. And then this container with the Carex grass is looking really pretty. So it's in the shade, so my pansies are doing pretty good. Hope it's not too windy for you guys. <laughs> Stained glass, that's what it's called. We can just bring it over here a little bit. I do have my hummingbird feeder out. That's all you do if you don't know, you can make your own syrup, just one cup, one cup to four cups. I got my fingers up there of water. One cup of white sugar to four cups of regular water. Make it come to a boil. And then I do put mine in a mason jar and save it. I have a video coming about this container. I haven't gotten it out yet, but look how pretty this raspberry rush is. Fasha girls moved a little bit. Oh, could you tell everybody hi? Oh, Sasha, can you tell everybody hi? Hmm? Can you? Hmm? <laughs> so my containers are doing really good. I already had a video come out about this. I was trying to do this one all as like a peach fuzz. That's the Pantone color of the year. And these are like the peachy verbenas. This is the brand new Super Tunia called Saffron Finch a real soft yellow color very pretty now these are the super bells i thought these were going to be just a little bit more corally but it's okay i think maybe they age out when they start aging out they look a little bit more corally but come out more like a rose color and then i've got my vermilionaire from a hummingbirds so i'll always plant my vermilionaire no matter what in these containers because i love to see my hummingbirds and then a little bit more of this peachy keen over here. It's really pretty. Look at this. The sun's just hitting it so lightly. So this is starting to fill out, starting to look pretty. And then I got some ivy here. This is from Prima Winters too. It was an accent at ivy. And then in the ground, starting to plant a lot of stuff. From seed, I planted this delphiniums, and then from seed, this pink salvia too. I need to come back and water this little guy. It is hot today, it's like 84. I have a little bit of salvia, and this is the uh, guana. This right here was new in the garden. Agastache is what this is. So I like it's got like pink and a little bit of the peachy color on it, it's really pretty. Then must have hit this one. It's hanging down a little bit. There it is, real close up. Isn't that pretty? This would make a good filler if I had a lot of it into my cut flowers. Salvia is looking really pretty. Bleeding hearts already 
bloomed out, but I still really like that foliage. Foliage looks really pretty. Hellebores, I need to come back and cut the hellebore flowers back. They're not liking this heat either. This bloom is completely done. Just done with. Look how pretty this salvia is up close. The bees were just on it. And then I have the spurge. This is the glacier blue spurge. It's really pretty. Look at the blooms on that. Gorgeous. My Vigo garden tomato cage is doing really pretty. I already have fruit on it. Look, you guys. So I got two different types of tomatoes in there. This one's already got a bloom on it there trellis on this is really pretty so I'll have the link for that if you guys are interested in this Vigo garden self-watering tomato cage it's on wheels as well which is nice because you can like move it around if you want and then it's self-watering and when this little thing goes down it tells you to add water right here very very nice so that's the Vigo tomato cage and then wine and roses wadula. This has been in the garden for a little while. Hummingbirds really like this plant as well. Gorgeous blooms. And I do like the foliage that it puts off throughout the summer. Walker's low nepeta. It's doing really good. It's blooming. I got the pink bubble gum. You can see the hellebores there. Still a little bit of a bloom on them. Doesn't that look so pretty right there with the petunias, the bubblegum petunias? And just got bees all over this Walker Lowe's Nepeta. Walker Lowe gets a good size, you guys. If you're looking for something with this structure, I love the texture of the leaves. I love the color of the calices, that real light purple. It's really pretty. And then I have some white gara that's blooming. They look really pretty together. So I call this my cottage garden and I like that it's, I like the spikiness, spiky stuff in here. And then that back there is the lantana tree. And I just bought that, I was really excited about that. Just planted that and I really haven't talked about it yet. So I told the guy at Southern Roots about this plant where I asked him because it's called Teeny Genie Compact Lantana. Look at the blooms, you guys, right here. This looks red right here, but it's hot pink. Can you see the hot pink? And then a little bit of coral color back there. Very pretty. That's what the colors look like. But this was a zone nine and I'm a zone eight. So I asked him, I told him, I said, none of my lantana came back. And this was a kind of a pricey plant. I think it was like $45 or something like that. And he basically told me, you know, I can go out tonight and buy a steak dinner and it'll just be gone. That money will be gone. But this plant is gonna give me enjoyment, enjoyment from now all the way till November. And I said, yeah. Enough said, that was that was a good point. I like this little walkway. So it kind of gives me a little bit of a walkway to get into it. But these are the sugar peas trying to grow up here on it. They haven't really like latched on to it just yet. I don't know. I keep on trying to train it up and it just hasn't took off yet like that. And then I have some Black Eyed Susans here too that I just planted somewhere right here. Black Eyed Susans, they're gonna be orange. Here I just planted some salvia. It's called Love and Wishes right there. Look at this little bloom. That's gonna be pretty right there, especially with that bubble gum in the purple, in this light purple, dark purple. And then moving on over here, more salvia. Bumblebees are all over this, look. Oh. So 
I just it just moved on me here. So the Walker's Low was just kind of like all the way down my landscaping right here. It used to be down a little bit further, but in the when my crepe myrtle starts to bloom, this area over here gets more shade. So I kind of pulled them out and just had these right here. But I've got lots of salvia in here. I have lots of coneflowers that are starting to come up. This is a coneflower right there. Spirea, candy corn spirea. Looks really pretty. They just have like four, four different seasons of interest. They really do, they're very pretty. Then all of my daffodils are starting to be um, cut back. And all that foliage will die off soon. Another container, just exactly the same. You could see the white gara behind there. The video that I did on my white gara says they're dancing butterflies in your landscape. Look at this bee. Lilac bush has already bloomed completely back. So I can come and prune this now. My puffer fish over there that the deer ate last year, way over there. I'm gonna have blooms off that this year, so that's exciting. Some more agastache back there. Hellebores are starting to calm down a little bit. My Jacob's ladder's done blooming. This columbine's about done, so I could probably cut that back. So now that I'm starting to get more shade, which is pretty exciting because these cryptomera trees are starting to provide more shade for me. So I can start putting some more shade loving plants in here like the hostas, these still be, this one is dark by the moon. This one's gonna be really pretty when it starts to bloom. Another hosta that has some volunteer pansies and then over here, this was all the daffodils that are gonna be cut back. I have some tall phlox. And I wanted to show you, my friend Loretta gave me these bearded irises. Look, you guys, isn't that so pretty? So they bloomed the first year. I planted them last fall and they bloomed. I don't, I'm assuming the blooms don't last very long because maybe a day. Are they kind of like day lilies? Do you guys know? But there's one. Thank you, Loretta. And this is the foxgloves that I planted in between these uh, daffodils right there. And then another little kind of a uh, not a hedge, a drift, a drift of them right there. They're gonna be really pretty. Can you imagine these being three feet tall and gorgeous flowers on them? My junipers are doing good. If you need something on a hill, this is a good plant for you. They're a little pokey though. That's the third container. Everybody loves these planters. These I got from Wilson's and I do know Unique Stone has some that are just like it too. But these concrete pads were really close, so I bought these little feet too to put underneath of it. That way it's not pinching my drip off. So it's a good idea if you guys need these. A little windy today, so you can hear my wind chime. Airplanes are over top of me too. Birds are down here. And this right here is begonias pretty pretty yellow begonias and i mixed it with this peach verbena i cut this off because i thought it looked like it needed it and i wished i didn't but oh well i still make rookie mistakes too and then i have some ornamental oregano down here hellebores and then everything, these are all volunteers too. The uh, Creeping Jenny, I don't know. I don't think that's a part of the Creeping Jenny, but it could be.
Look at this. Yeah, soft, gorgeous yellow. And then this is starting to yellowing on me, you guys. So I did um, spray it with fungicide yesterday. The other two on the other side don't look like this, but so if you see yellowing leaves like this, it's some type of fungus, just FYI. This is a Nellie Stevens holly, and I took all the lower limbs off and just made it into like a little topiary tree. And then roses over here are really looking good. This is Miss Olivia right here. So she comes out pink and then she kind of like goes into like a more of a white color too. Real pale uh, pinkish to white. I got lots of new foliage on that one. This one down here is called Celebration. This is another David Austin Rose. Look at all the blooms, all, like, all the petals, I mean. They're just stuck in there so tight. Last year, I hardly saw any blooms on this one because like I said, the deer got it and it got some kind of fungus. So this year, I really put the neem oil on it. And then there's Olivia again. And then look at the Happy Jack Clematis, you guys. It's just starting to come out. And then my climbing rose, which is the Shrodfire, Shrod, Shrodshire Lad. I love this color of the rose. Let's get a little closer. This is how the Happy Jack looks. And I'd say it's very, very happy. Let me show you this. Look at how beautiful this is, you guys. Like, I think it's precious. I just so love this rose. It's more of a peachy color than any of the other ones. And this one smells so good. Gorgeous. So this one is going to be so happy. This is on a three-way trellis. So when the um, roses starting to bloom out and all this clematis, it looks so pretty. And another tip, you guys, is that I do, after this clematis starts to um, stop blooming, I cut it back and I get one more flush out of it just to let you know. And they said clematis don't like hot feet, so I planted some dalla leaves down here. And normally the deer eat it, but I'm just gonna start to have something this year. They already ate it once when they got through my fence the first time and I had to add more line to it. And this is the uh, a sugar shack that I've never seen bloom. Don't know if it's gonna bloom. We'll see if it's happier over here. And then I still have to cover my drip up. And then that's the temple of bloom right there from Proven Winners that I just planted. What else is over here? My Rose of Sharon. It's getting taller than me. And then down here I have a strawberry hydrangea and some dahlias coming up. I think. I don't know. I don't think dahlias have thorns on them, do they? I don't know. It might not be. It might not be a dahlia. I had them all around in here, so it must be because they're all over the place. I have some sedum right there, and then my yarrow looks really pretty. Look at this yarrow. Yarrow makes a really good cut flower that's a perennial. So this is a dahlia, you guys. So that other thing with those thorns, that must be a weed. I'm gonna have to go get them out. So it's probably time to pinch this, this dahlia right here. So that's all you do is just take your clippers or pinch it with your fingers like so. And then that way you're gonna get new branching. You'll get some little ones that will go here and here. And instead of having this one main plant, you could have two. And you can also, if you wanted to, you can put this in ridding hormone and get a whole new plant out of it. So I just did that too. I'll show that into another video, but that was very interesting. It worked. It absolutely worked. It took about two weeks for them to root out and for me to plant. This is what we're looking. That's another dahlia right there. And then my big white dahlia grows right in here. So I need to kind of watch this and go ahead and probably stake some of these. Then two more rows of Sharon's over here. 
more cat mat. This one is called, not cat's pajamas, cat's meow. It's a little bit bigger than the cat's pajamas, which is right there. This one's pretty dense this year. Look, I got another weed there. Another weed. Imagine that. <laughs> this one's a little bit more dense and compact than the other cat's meow. Another celebration rose. You guys are looking at this and thinking this is a crazy lady coming out of me right here. But these, I'm gonna want to, I want to do a lot of projects this year with cut flowers. So these are all my dahlias, and then I labeled them so I know what they're gonna be and to make sure they even like come up. And on the back of it, I put what where I got them from. So I'll know next time. So they say dahlias, you want to put them in the ground and then you want to make sure they have new growth before you start to water them. I did water this just lightly, but I did not drench them. So these are seven gallon grow bags. And then once they all flower, you're never going to see these grow bags down here. And I honestly cannot see them from my house because they're hidden from my rose garden down here and so are my raised garden beds this one is from savannah and then i have all of my rhinoculuses down here too and then i have my fishing line which is really really hard to see you can't even hardly see it you can see it this way you see right here i had to add more so i've got five lines going down here this, this one ends right here. It's kind of like right above my, oh, I'm going to say shoulder level, I guess. I've got my sweet peas that I grew from seed growing up this little trellis right here on each corner. I planted basil. I have all the dahlias in here. These came from cuttings that like, like, like just what I told you to do earlier. They took it right off the tuber and then rooted it and then sent them out to me so you can buy a tuber in a like a little potato tuber form or you can buy cuttings too and then these are the ranunculuses that i grew i just cut some the other day these are the italian ones and i love them and i will do these again these are the ones that the deer like put their whole hooves in. Do you remember? And they pulled them up and ate them and I had to replant some. Well, I did get some new blooms out of them. And I had some volunteer pansies from last year that are white. And then these are all my dahlias that I just planted. And I have some, some volunteers. That's some kind of zinnia. I think there were lime zinnias in here from last year. So lots of volunteers in here as well. I'm gonna put some Cosmos in here too. I thought the dahlias and Cosmos would be really pretty. And then there's all my grow bags. And Sasha just got around the fence there or the post, I need to go free her. So this is the rose garden looking up, just kind of give you like how much of a hill we are on. This is the back of the house. These are the sprinter boxwoods, and these are Alexandra of Kent. And you guys, look how big these blooms are compared to my hand. They are so big, and this flower smells so good. So these have been in for four years, and I'm going to say, and maybe because of the deer ate a lot of them, this is the best that they have ever done for me. There's four plants or four, what do you want to call them? I bought them bare root. So four bare root roses in this area right here. Gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful, 
Beautiful, beautiful. And these right here are box of bells. And I do have my great big gigantic alliums growing right here. Look how pretty they are. These make the garden look magical to me. I have some that hasn't like really bloomed out just yet. And that's what the leaves look like. And they're tall. I think they're called Globe Masters Alliums. I got those, the bulbs from Color Blends. Look how Bosca Bell looks. I love her color too. Like she always has different pinks and corals on her. Gorgeous. I have five bare root flowers in this one. It's a little bit bigger area in the front. So from the cottage garden over to the rose garden. I have four different areas of different roses, four sections, all four different roses. Crepe myrtles are really pretty. They've been pruned back and they're like really dense this year. They're gonna have lots of flowers on them. I just have to show you again, Boscobel. This quadrant right here is called Gabrielle Oak, and this one is the hottest pink of all. This one is known for its smell as well. Another allium, another allium. And this one's already got lots of blooms and still lots more to come. Forgive me, this is my Galloway urn from Unique Stone. I truly love this piece. Do not remember every single plant in here, but you can go back to where I planted it up. So these are gorgeous. I got these from Wilson's. This is the first time that I planted these. They're called Capula or something like that. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong because I don't have the word in front of me. And then purple verbena. And then I have some super bells. This is a great punch that I had last year. It was gorgeous. An angel wing, which is kind of droopy right now, needs to be watered. Spurge back here. This is the rainbow escot spurge. And then a curly grass, which didn't really transplant very well. And then the kind of same thing on the side over here. And these are kind of very similar to snapdragons. They have a name, and I forgot. These really smell good really really good I do have the tags in here somewhere but if I showed you everything I'd be here forever and then these are Oakland hollies they do really good they're making they make a good screening plant as well and then this right here is Eustasia Ive trying to get my shadow out so these are just a more of a pale pink this one's a pretty new rose very, very pretty. Look at the cluster here. I planted 50 alliums and all, not all 50 came up. I still have some, you see down there in the corners here that haven't came up yet. There's my arbor so we can get in and out because we have that invisible fence down there. And these Nellie Stevens are looking a little bit more healthier. That's why I said the other I sprayed for fungus. And then I have a standard form limelight hydrangea tree right over there. And then my whole hedge of limelights. 
and they're gonna probably bloom sometime in June, June or July. Hanging baskets that me and my mama planted up look really pretty. Urbina, super bells. Have two of those. Limelight hydrangeas are looking so pretty. And then I've really tried to work hard down here on my third tier, you guys. With the hardy geraniums that are blooming out. The Bordeaux. Lemon coral sedum. And then the Lamium. Like I said, I'm really trying hard to give that third tier look. You know, with the head, knees, and toes look. Sedum's looking pretty. Looks like it's on, like it's variegated. A little wilty from the sun. This salvia has already bloomed, so I'm gonna have to cut this back. But the more you cut back, the more salvia will rebloom. If you didn't know that, more hardy Roseanne geraniums. This plant has um, the oregano, ornamental oregano in it. Needs watering. I could hook that up to drip. I haven't done it yet. But you can see that's not a snake, that's drip line. I just need to find my drip and plug it up. Look at this geranium that's coming up. Isn't that pretty how it's coming up into the limelights right there? I love that. I love how things mingle together. Never expected that, to do that. So we're going on the skinny side garden right here and these are the roses that I had planted at my arbor and they're yellow. Look how pretty they are. the name somewhere. I'll find it for you. But I've got two of these roses climbing up this arbor. And it's the exact same arbor that I have down at the end that's attached to my invisible fence. I do have like aphids all over these though. I've already sprayed on but they keep coming back. And aphids, aphids all over them. Oh, trying to find the tag. They're called the Pilgrim, and they are a climbing rose from David Austin. Yesterday, I planted some geraniums right here. These are called. Lavender rose geraniums. I like how it's got the foliage on it, different color foliage on there. And look at this bloom. How bright and cheerful this is. Very cheerful. All right, you guys, so that's what the backyard looks like. Emerald green umber vates, little lime, lime lights, hydrangeas. And I just went over all the Ground cover, that's Miss Grace from Unique Stone. Two planters that me and my mom just planted up for my birthday. This is what the Grows Garden looks like. A little wind chime over there, the little wind spinner things just going so pretty down there. And then the cottage garden. So pretty. Grass is looking good. We have the sod because we are one weathered grass. Look how pretty the grass is, you guys. Looks so pretty. I always have products. I can tell you what products I have if you want your grass to look better. We always put Soul Amendment down. I like Anderson's products. I'll throw the links up there for you. 
we've already put down fungus control already, grub control. The grub control was the duicide. It does the ants and all that stuff too. And the Anderson's PGF complete every single month for fertilizer. We put down pre-emergent from Anderson's already. And then we put the soil amendment on for the last three years and I'm done with that because we've already turned our soil over. We have that hard, heavy clay soil. This is the aqua pot and it's starting to fill out really pretty with all the new super petunias that were in here. That's that new orchid vivid petunia from Proven Winners. Rabina, jazzberry, coleus, grasses. I have everything in here. Make sure you watch that video. And this is the skinny side that we pull up in the driveway. I just had a video on the three tiered cascading, cascading from Kinsman. We planted all that up, so make sure you watch that video. I'm excited to see these all fill out. These are sun impatience, which can do sun or shade. And then the caladiums down here are really pretty. Look at that. More cat's pajamas. I need to prune some of this up. Look how needs a haircut. Look at this. What's well, another day? More containers with that vivid orchid. So pretty. The hoopla vivid orchid. Containers are starting to fill out really nice. More angel wing, coleus, jazzberry, potato vine. Then these are all the mini white petunias. The mini Vista white. Just a whole gorgeous drift of those. And then the very last to emerge, usually for a perennial, is the hardy hibiscus right here. This loves that space. And then this holly was there when we moved in. It was the only thing that I pretty much left in this garden. And look at the Lady of the Lake, you guys. This is a climbing rose. Not very as many petals, but the bees love this one. She's a real light pink and has yellow in the center. And then my husband and me came up with this design with the wire going across so I can train it to go all the way across. So it's going to be so pretty when it gets there, but I love the structure of it this year of how we pruned it. So pretty. Japanese maple, the Japanese maple is doing really pretty. And then I need to come and give these little spiral boxwoods haircuts too. And my boxwood head back there is really, really pretty. I just got a complimentary. Oh, where are the little beetles that eat aphids and stuff like that? And they eat spider mites too. I don't know if you guys knew that. I got new pillows on my rocking chairs up there. I love those. And I do have a bird nesting in my wreath, you guys. Just showing you my pillows a little closer there. And I wanted to show you this bird nest up here. So I hope he doesn't make a mess. Or she. I guess she's a she. Or he. I guess it takes two, doesn't it? So you see the bird nest up there? I think they're house finches that are in there. And look at these roses a little bit closer up. Look at the detail in there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love them. They're kind of falling off on me. <laughs> it's starting to fill up this whole side of the house with these roses. And then my limelight hydrangea tree over there. And that was the west side garden that I started last year. This is the front porch area. That's what it looks like. 
on the other side. Look how gorgeous that tree structure is. Isn't it pretty? All right, back on this side. So let's go over here and show you this west side garden. So I carried over the mini Vista whites over here as well. These pansies over here are still looking good because they're in the shade more. I came over here and kind of deadheaded them a little bit yesterday. Sun hostas looking gorgeous. Uh, I don't know what this is, you all. What is that? I don't know what that is. That's aphids? Is that black aphids? Uh, all right, I'm just keep finding more and more stuff, don't I? They're all over those, whatever that is. I guess it's aphids, look. All righty, keep finding more stuff. Look how gorgeous this is. Isn't this funky? It throws out runners too. I've got one right there that I pulled up and it's rooted in really well. So if you like this plant, you can also pull the runners up and replant them. This is the, um, I got spirea in my head. Sweet spire, sweet spire. It's gorgeous. And this plant, you guys, love this plant. Like it has the best fall color I've ever seen on a shrub. Like it is like, look how beautiful it is. And then it's beautiful in the fall too. I have some salvia that came back last year from Proven Winters that overwintered. And that one was called Playing the Blues. Rockin' Playing the Blues. Look, you guys, second year. And then my Fatsia is back there hanging out. And then this is a Rambler Rose from David Austin. This is called the Floss on the Mill. And this is Floss on the Mill close up. Just lots and lots of very dense petals. Very dense. This thing's super happy here. Loves this spot. Loves it. Look at this columbine. Isn't that pretty? This is my favorite. Look at all these. Just many, many petals. <laughs> I love that. Those I bought bare root last year. They didn't do anything last year, but this year, oh, they came out gorgeous. So if you plant something bare root, like don't give up on it because the second year it may came back, it comes back gorgeous, look. So last year it didn't do anything. It was just growing roots. Now it's gorgeous. Ying and Yang over there, it's kind of already done their thing. They were so pretty. I have more of the columbine up there that's a little bit taller and orange. Look at that climbing vine over there. This is my honeysuckle from Proven Winners. And this one is like, this was, this is the second year. And I planted it late in the year. It's got something all over it too. It's not bloomed yet. I don't know what is all over. Look at this, you guys. Like, oh my gosh, like I've got such an aphid problem. It is just covered on it. Man, like, I cannot believe this. Where are my little things that look, look, they're all over the place. I guess I can take and come spray this. Yuck, yuck. So I don't have aphid on my roses very well, very bad this year, but everything else I do. Columbine's pretty. So if you guys have a big problem like this, you can either like 
release insects or neem oil. There's something trying to eat, eat, eat all of them. But that's a bad problem. Oh, it's gross. But there is something trying to eat them over here. Ladybugs, that's what I released, ladybugs. So the dianthus is really pretty. I do love this type of dianthus. Tough Stuff Hydrangea is gonna look really pretty this year. I got two of those right together. Some daylilies growing. I'm up on the hill up here. Butterfly bushes. This is the Budlia from Proven Winners, the dwarf one. These are the Punkster Blue. I have five of these. They're not doing anything just yet. And then hardy hibiscus lilacs from Proven Winners that are coming up. I have three of these. These are all my daffodils that are have to die back the foliage. I do prune them back a little bit, but I leave a good amount for them to die back. So it will regenerate the bulb for next year. And this is the Ruby Hydrangea that likes a little bit more shade. The Oakland, Oakland Leaf Hydrangea, Ruby. Ruby Slippers, I believe. Yin and Yang that's already completed. It's blooms. So these are the after it blooms, that's what it looks like right there. Look at the foxglove, you guys. This is why I wanted many, many foxgloves. Look how pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? It just gives a big height. It's like it's so tall. It's just a big presence. It's like a big focal point. And I've got purple and some white. This one I had to stake, as you can see. Another Tough Stuff Hydrangea. Let's see. I have another Limelight Hydrangea tree. And this is Munstead Wood, David Austin Rose. This is the deepest red burgundy color, I guess you should say. Look how gorgeous that is. It almost looks like um, purple too, right? Like that jazzberry, but a little bit deeper color. I've got four of these. I have the serendipity coming up. These are my hens and chicks. They look good. You come back and prune a little bit of these. I have my tall flocks looking gorgeous back there. Look, you guys, this is going to be pretty when these finally get a little bit taller. And then you have this tall phlox behind it. Look how pretty that would be. More fox gloves over there. That's my Ansonia. Ansonia? <laughs> Clematis growing up the obelisk here. I do have one bloom over here. Let me show you. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? That one's white and this one's going to be hot pink. So this is the other side of the cottage garden. Those are the tea olives. I have a little gem magnolia. And then this is all the west side garden right here that we just toured. This area is the skinny side garden. This, uh, this area is always hard in the summertime because the air conditioners always kick in. But you know guys, it's 80 for today. But this is my red bud. Do you remember that we had to break the pot and plant this. Look how pretty this is this year. So it's happy. It's gonna like this space. This is for another project. Oh, it just kicked off. And then I planted all these I did from seed, you guys. 
I did the eucalyptus, the delphiniums. These all right here are the seeds that I did from um, Floret Farm. All the dahlias, and I have zinnias. And then down here I have celosia. Some of them are starting to give a little bit of color. The red and the yellows, oranges. And then on this side, I have my lisianthus that are growing, are just like babies. These are the slowest things to grow. You have to be really patient with those. More eucalyptus. I need to move this coral bells, but I haven't moved it yet. And then this down here, it looks like weeds, but it's not, let's see. Those are Gallardia. They're gonna be like a pretty good size yellow bloom. So I have Gallardia here, Gallardia there, and then I try to repeat the same down there, down onto this side over here, so it can be cohesive. So I have the Celosia here, and then Xenias, Dahlias, same. And some of these dahlias and zinnias are the ones that I had pinched back and got to root again because some of them didn't look so hot. So I wanted to make sure everything was full. But look at the celosia. Autumn blaze, celosia. It's gonna be so pretty. I have cosmos to mix in too. I think I'm gonna mix those into my dahlias. Cosmos and dahlias together, what do you guys think? And then coming down here, I got this new, my mama wanted one, so I had to have one too. I got this for my son, Kyle. I miss him so much, he comes home soon. He's in Italy in the 173rd Airborne. You guys, keep him in your prayers, please. Coral bark, Japanese maple, our noisy makers right here. And then we have ferns. Pinocchi, St. John's wort, and then back to the backyard again. I hope you enjoyed this April garden tour. I'm really excited. I honestly thought these roses would bloom more in May than they did at the end of April, but I'm, I think I'm going to have a lot of blooms still in May as well, but I'm just in love with all these David Austin roses, and I found a lot of stuff that I'm not in love with, those aphids. I can't believe I had so many aphids in the garden, but I know like if you have this big ecosystem that you're gonna bring things to you as well. And also found a snake this past week too that was hiding underneath my chair. My dad moved the chair from the sun into the shade and it just came slithering out and I was like so grossed out. I saw little baby snakes before, but not one this big. And I heard they're gonna be bad because of the cicadas this year. Have you guys heard that? Have you seen more snakes? Like comment and let me know if you have. If you have aphids in your garden, like tell me too, like make sure you comment. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Send me pictures of your gardens if you want to on Instagram and I can share them on here as well. I think some of my audience would like to see that also. I love it when, um, Janie with the dig plant water repeat like submitted my garden onto her video and so did Laura with garden answer I just like loved it. So anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends